guys, um, this is Sarah Fisher on the Sarah Fisher channel and I'm super, super, super excited for you guys to meet not only our state representative, preacher's wife, but also one of my good friends, Stephanie yeah. Borwick yeah. in the having- house, in the flesh, which <laughs> I'm really excited. So thank you for being here. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for asking me to come. It's awesome. It's an honor. Yeah. It's such an honor. Um, anyways, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and just a little bit about yourself and how you grew up? Before sure. I dive into the controversial questions yeah. <laughs> that I want to uh, ask. <laughs> uh, gosh, that's a broad question. So I guess everything from zero to 46, huh? From when I was born <laughs> to 46 years whatever, old. But... Whatever you think, who <laughs> made you, what made you you today? Uh, that's a good, that's a good one. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, that even might make like, me when did up. the dream to be in politics start? Well, I had no dream never to be in politics. Really? No, that was never in the cards. I, it was not something I even Sorry. thought about. Although, you know, it was something that I always followed. Like, the election nights are my sister and I's, like, um, Super Bowl. You know, we'd stay oh up till gosh. 2 in the morning. Uh, we we were up the night, you know, Obamacare came through that we didn't want. We were watching that at 1 or 2 in the morning, kind of trying to say, hey, everybody yeah. wake up. This is going to be passed through the House of Representatives. Wow. It's not a good thing. So yeah. anyway, that's kind of been always my Super Bowl and my thing, but yeah. never, ever thought of running for office, by the way. Um, oh my so I grew up in outside of Orlando, Florida. So if we go back to oh, my you're a child, Florida girl, yeah. So I moved here I about what 15 years ago. We've been here a long time. So this yeah. is all my kids know. Um, you know, born in they weren't born here, but they've been raised here. Yeah. And so they just know small town America, which is amazing up here. Um, I'll, I'll kind of speak to that if you want me to of how we got here. Yeah. Do um, it. but boy, uh, born and raised in Orlando, Florida. Uh, my dad, you know, owned a small business. Uh, my grandparents also owned small businesses, Lingle's Department Store in Brooksville, Florida. Um, obviously, my mom and dad, it was a great Christian home, so just church every Sunday. Uh, nice. I went to my grandparents' house every week for dinner. Uh, just a great um, bringing up in yeah. a Christian home, uh, just the typical American home. Um, my grandparents, uh, on my mom's side, I, you know, I knew both of them, my dad's side, you know, grandparents, but my mom's side really was a special part of my life. I lost them probably less than like 10 years ago. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. Yeah. They lived, you know, great full lives, um, but they yeah. were part of that greatest generation. Um, I went over there almost every day. They always, wow. you know, my grandmother was just a good Southern cook, uh, just the epitome of great Americans. Yeah. Um, and so I just, so much was instilled in me from them. Obviously mm-hmm. my parents too, work ethic. My dad had me working by the time I was 13 mm-hmm. at the plant nursery that he ran. Oh my gosh, I love it. That, that was generational in our family on his yeah. side. And so, you know, so much has been instilled through my dad and mom also. My mom just every night saying, you know, Jesus loves you. And wow, so I think- that's so powerful. Right, just that simple so little thing yeah. my sister and I said made, made such a huge difference in our lives of our mom saying that. Wow. But I have to say losing my grandparents was an instrumental like change in my life because they had always been there. Uh, I called mm-hmm. them mom B and pop. So my, my sister couldn't say uh, grandmother, so she just said mom A, which was my mom, oh, and then cute. mom B. <laughs> it, it ends up her yeah. name was uh, Melba Blackburn Lingle. So that was her maiden name was Blackburn. So mom B kind of stuck. So I might- if I, when we have grandkids, one day I might go with mom B, although <laughs> she was a good cute. cook and I was not. But anyway, <laughs> mom B and pop were my grandparents. Okay. I have her ring on my finger. Uh, um, oh, that's you know, so cool. So much of what they instilled in me through that greatest yeah. generation. My grandfather was a World War II vet. Um, wow. Those have stuck with, stuck with me. Um, and at their funeral, I got up and spoke and just said, everything that they've taught me, everything they've instilled in my life, uh, help me Lord, basically to just continue with that. Um, all those small town values that a handshake meant something and all these things that I said in the speech at their funeral. Um, and now I see God using that saying, okay, Stephanie, it's your turn to step up all that your grandparents taught you in your life and, and my parents, I have a sister. She's three years older than me. We're best friends. Everything I do is with my sister, whether that's praying together every day. Um, my sister and I pray together every day. Um, just everything. You know, my husband always jokes. He goes, go call your sister. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's awesome. Very close with my sister. Uh, I kind of have an adopted sister also that I'm very close to. Her name's Jess. And, uh, you know, then got married. Three boys. How Um, did you meet your husband? Okay, good question. I want to know that. (laughs) So, (laughs) because... Is he from Florida as well? Yeah, he's oh, from Clearwater Beach. He was born in okay. Nebraska, 
raised in Clearwater Beach, though. Oh, and so goodness. he oh. is um, also Floridian, but he we met at youth group. So oh, what a healthy weather for me, <laughs> you know, like in today's age. Right. Day and age. So kind of funny story, but he. One of my good friends, we I went to a Christian school my whole life, uh, Altamont yeah. Christian. Great, great school right there in Altamont Springs, Florida. Um, and my, one of my good friends picked this guy up. <laughs> it's horrible. Picked this guy up, you know, as he was going down one of these <laughs> roads. And he was oh riding, I guess, in a convertible. Or she was. Anyway, she picked him up. She ended up bringing him to church. He came to know Jesus. Uh, at the so church. he was not a believer. No, that. Jason was not a believer. What? And so he, uh, they oh dated goodness. like two years. Well, they ended up breaking up. Okay. So he remained kind of in the church youth group friendship group. You kind of probably know a little bit yeah. about that. Like, you know, the friendships yeah. at your church that you have that kind of stuck through. Well, Jay kind of kept hanging out with all of us and she didn't because they broke up and it was just a horrible situation. But she's a great, I mean, she's amazing. <laughs> um, and so he kept hanging out with us and then we kind of started Liking each other. Well, I mean, you know, he was the big uni- University of Central Florida <laughs> basketball player. He didn't yeah. want to commit to, you know, um, little old me. But, you know, after a few years and I went off to wow. college and then he realized, you know, that he wanted to be, you know, wow. my boyfriend. So that's yeah. so cool. So it took him a few years to come around. Yes, it to definitely did. To see you. Yes, it wow. sure did. And, and that, now you're at, here. At that point, too, I was like, you know what, I really don't care. Like, I don't like you. You know, it wasn't like something that I, yeah. I needed him in my life at that point. And then of course that's when he was like, Oh yeah, I really like you. I want, <laughs> I want to start dating that's you. Awesome. So yeah, long story short, we ended up together. We went out to school together in California. Cause one of our good friends that actually passed away, oh, wow. uh, some of the missionaries, the France, uh, okay. their, uh, one of their sons was really good friends with Jason and I named Jethro. His name oh, was Jethro. Fine. So Jonathan's brother, oh, yeah. he went to school in California. It was a Christian school out there. We had planned to go with him, and he actually died in a scuba diving oh. accident. And so we went oh. ahead with his brother and went out to California. I think it killed my dad because he had to see me leave from Florida to California. Yeah. But I went. we went out to school uh, in California. I graduated in two years out there, um, you know, with my four-year degree. And then we moved back to Florida and got married, had boys. And then, long story short, how we got here... <laughs> Uh, we grew yes. up with John and Susie also okay. who were the pastors of Crossroads. And so yeah. Jay got a hold of John. John said, you need to come visit Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania. Uh, we'd love to, wow. s- you know, we need an associate pastor. The little town of Jersey Shore. Right. <laughs> and my husband came here and he said, this is like literally made for you. He goes, everybody loves God. Everybody loves this country. <laughs> <laughs> they love guns. <laughs> And they love guns. And yes. so they are literally like, this is like, it's like this area was made for you. Yeah. And so I came up here. I saw the mural in Jersey Shore that says, you oh, know, fun. Second Chronicles 714. Or yes. You know which one I'm talking yes. about? Uh, it has the George Washington praying yes. in Valley Forge and all the history in Pennsylvania. And then this great area, small town America, uh, Law Haven and Clint County and, and Lycoming County. It just, it fit right with us. And so we prayed about it and here we came. Wow. Yeah. But 15, at that point, 16 years later. Oh my gosh. At that point, you weren't, you were just a pastor's wife. You weren't yet. Yeah. Oh, I was a stay at home mom. A stay at home so, mom. And yeah. so when did politics come into picture? Oh, it was a while. So my kids were a little bit older before that even happened. So okay. I came up here as a stay at home mom. I did teach at a Christian school, fourth grade for two years. Oh, wow. So you were a teacher as well. Yeah, for two years at a Christian school, but in it, <laughs> yeah, so cool. and then I uh, got pregnant with my first son, and so then after I had Brayden, I stayed home. I wanted to stay at home with my kids, and um, we made that work. And so wow. then when we came up here, I stayed at home. I helped run the youth group. Tate, I think, was around a little bit for that, but um, <laughs> ran the youth group with my husband with the three boys and stayed home with them. And yeah, um, you know, that's it. oh, and then you wanted to know how it yeah, like when did it out. start? When yeah. did this? Because you were always like, politics was a big thing for you. But when did you actually, when when was the moment that you were like, I'm actually getting myself into politics? Right. Well, they came, people came to me. So the chairman oh. of Clinton County Republican Party, I started attending meetings. So Republican Party meetings. What made you attend meetings? Um, 
I just, I guess I wanted to be involved. I, it was the 2016 yeah. election, and I knew that the U.S. Uh, Supreme yeah. Court hung in the balance. I knew that there was so much at stake in that election. And so yes. I'm like, how can I be involved? What can I do? And so I started going to the Republican meetings, um, meeting with the chairman, and he goes, I think he called it, you know, he saw a fire in me. And so he contacted it. the state party. This was 2016, like I said. Mm-hmm. He contacted the state party, um, and they actually came kind of like what we're doing and did an interview with me, like to oh, wow. to say like, That's you know, so who cool. is this? Is she, you know, yeah. is she, is she the real you? Is right. She not, yeah. Like, is she legitimate? And, you know, yeah. and so they came, they kind of talked to me and said, Hey, you know, this is what the race would look like. You know, he's, he's been in for a long time. Uh, I think it was 26 years, uh, Democrat oh, incumbent. Wow. That was the current state rep in Clinton County. And they said, you know, would you, you know, want to do this? I said, well, let us pray about it. We prayed about it. Some I love de- that. Yeah, something I definitely uh, felt called to do. Wow. And so, but it's really cool to see, because your husband is a pastor. And yeah. I feel like, I feel like it's changing now with the younger generation, but I feel like a lot of the churches shied away from politics. And it's really cool to see you be like, no, like I'm going to pursue this because I think church and politics should go together. So tell me what you think about that. Like how, why the church should be involved? Oh my goodness. Uh, it, the church must be involved in the town square. So I, I, I don't necessarily say, pol- I mean, it is politics, but it's just being involved in the town yeah. square. It's being involved in world affairs. Yeah. Um, Benjamin Franklin said that God governs in the affairs of man. And so, uh, you know, from George Washington to Ronald Reagan, you know, uh, all of those, uh, you know, presidents in the past knew that um, you know, we needed church involvement yeah. in our government and how important that is. Um, and, and just important that Christians are involved in the town square and in civil government, right? Mm-hmm. If we don't mm-hmm. have good Christians in these positions and we shy back from it, well, yeah. then who's going to be governing us? That's Those so that good. have a secular viewpoint, not a biblical worldview, They have a secular worldview. And so if we don't have people in these positions that have a biblical worldview, and I think we're down to what, 6% of Americans that have a biblical worldview. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, It's bad. (laughs) And so this is what's happened. Uh, Don't get me started on on how weak that the church has gotten in America today. And so the church needs to get back to, I don't know why the church shies away from, these are biblical issues, whether it's marriage between a man and a woman, whether it's what they're trying to do to little children through uh, pornographic images and the Mm -hmm. transgender uh, that they're trying to shove down these little kids' throats. Um, that's so it's, good. yeah, it's sick. It's vile. Yeah. And so it's, it's the duty of the church. I think we've got, that's a key word for me. Uh, duty is ours. Results are God's. And that mm-hmm. is the church's job. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a great book, uh, Eric Metaxas, uh, I think that's how you say his name wrote. And it says, um, silence of the American church. I think something along those lines, but it talks about the German church and how silent the German church was wow. during hit the rise of Hitler and all of that, that went over in Germany and the church a large majority of the church wow. sat silent while well, that was happening. Yes, and that's why I refuse. Obviously, we're you know before that point, but like there is a real threat to take this nation down. Yeah. Um. And so the church, it's not politicians. It's not you know. Yeah. It's not coming through one person and looking to a president. It's going to come through the church speaking God's truth, God's word, mm-hmm. truth and love. And that's what heals our nation. And then it raises up leaders to become mm-hmm. governors, to become mm-hmm. state reps, to then hold to a biblical mm-hmm. worldview in those positions. So, wow. That's so good. Yeah. It's about so time. <laughs> it's about time. I mean, it's about I time the it. church uh, yeah. gets involved. Yeah. No, gets that's involved. so good. I think one of the things I really admire about you is you're in politics, which I'm sure you get a lot of hate. I know you get, you get, you have gotten death threats. I don't know if you still do, but you, you're so full of joy. Yeah. Like all the time. And I love that. Yeah. Like it doesn't, <laughs> nothing that comes at you weighs you down, even though like you're, you're, the weight of the world is sometimes on you, so to speak. So I really love that you carry so much joy, yeah. but that's Jesus. How does, how does your family handle that? You know, that yeah, you, that's a good question. you're in the middle of politics, you're receiving death threats. Yeah. What's that like for um, your family? You know, that just comes from Jesus. Obviously my joy comes from Jesus. Yeah. And so it's a constant being in God's word. Amen. Um, and it's a constant praying every day. 
uh, because it, there is a lot of spiritual warfare that you don't see yeah. behind the scenes. But it, this is a battle of good versus evil. So this, this so good. Yeah, this whole fight that we're in is a battle of good versus evil. Mm-hmm. We're not fighting people. So that's why it's easy for me. I had haters at one of my events yesterday. Um, you know, and, and I just kind of smile. You know, I'm talking to them. I debated them <laughs> I with truth, you know, of God's yeah. word. But I didn't. I don't get mad. And like, and they're like, well, don't get. And I go, listen, you aren't getting me irritated or mad. Yeah, like that's so good. And so it. I know I'm not fighting those people. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. fighting. The Bible tells us. You know, we fight principalities and rulers of this dark world. And so. I don't know. I just always have joy. Now on the family, it is a lot because it's a huge job. I heard somebody say this is like a job on steroids. Like it's, (laughs) it's, uh, you go from zero to like a thousand and you have 63,000 people that you're representing. And it's a huge responsibility. It's a Mm -hmm. huge weight that you don't want to take lightly because when those people walk in that voting booth and they vote for you, that's a huge responsibility upon your shoulders to say, Hey, I'm going to do what's right. I'm yeah. going to vote correctly. I'm going to make sure that people are, you know, watching over their rights, securing their rights and their liberties as a mm-hmm. state representative. So it's something I don't take lightly. It's a huge honor. Um, and it does, it is a huge weight on the family, you know, with my sons. Yeah. But my one thing I've always told my boys, and they've known this about mom the whole time, I'm not doing this for a job. Like, I didn't do this for a job. Yeah. I felt it was something that Jesus wanted me to do. So I, I stepped up that. to the plate. I don't need the job. I'm yeah. very happy being either go back to being a stay at home mom. I was working <laughs> at the kids school in the little thrift store. Like I, I don't need it. I just, I'm trying to do what Jesus has called me to do yes. and then stand up for we, the people. That's um, so good. and so it's just, you know, I, I hold it with an open hand. Yeah. And so, I think that's really powerful too, because obedience, like that example of obedience is what's going to mark them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Not that you, you're, you're like, I don't need a job, but you're being, I'm, I'm obedient yes. to what the Lord's calling me to. Right. And that, I find that has the greatest impact. Yeah. And to rise up so. in the time that God's called us to rise up. Yes. I mean, this is a specific for such a time as this, that he's called and chosen all of us to That's live. so good. Like that Queen Esther moment where yeah. you're like, no, this is what I've been made Absolutely. for. And you know, so Jay good. looked at me the second time because I ran twice. I know we didn't talk about that, but I lost the first time and I was basically yeah. like, I'm never going to run again. Like, you know, I don't yeah. get it, Lord. I felt like you were, wow. you wanted me to run and I lost. And of course I was naive in the political world world of how hard it would be to win. Um, and I basically just said, you know, I, I, I don't want to ever run again, but Jay looked at me the second time when they came back and said, would you think about running again in 2018? Mm -hmm. And he just said, we're going to live with no regrets. So if you look back on this and you would regret it, I want you to go for it. And I said, you know, and that was his side. There was another side. I prayed again and definitely felt like the Lord called me to run again. And turns out but even having people that see the vision that you have right and can hold you to it right when you're like oh I'm done that's really powerful yeah (laughs) so powerful and there were struggles in it like you know midway through the second race you know and you get pulling and oh well it doesn't look like you're gonna you know it's like oh my gosh okay well I'm being obedient at that point yes and uh turns out you know God had me win for at that specific timeline in history, uh, right before a year before, uh, the shutdowns with COVID. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, after I prayed in the state house, that was a year almost to the day yeah. of when COVID the shutdown started. And then after that was a, um, contentious election. I mean, it has been quite the four or five years. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so and you're still here, which I love. I'm still here. Yeah. I'm still here. Um, you, which I love, like you, you stand on the Bible in, in the middle of you represent being a state representative right. and you pray in front of thousands of people and get hate for it. Like how, how does, what does that feel like? Like how does, how is it for you to walk out the Christian walk while being state representative? I, oh my gosh, I, I love that. You love to, it? To get to be an ambassador for Jesus, which is what yes. the Bible calls us, is a huge honor. Wow. And I've always said like, that was that the first term that I was in, it was the first thing that I wanted to do was to just pray to open session. So Benjamin, so good. <laughs> right. Benjamin Franklin has been yeah. the speaker of house in Pennsylvania, all yeah. the history in Pennsylvania that we, um, you know, we have here, whether Valley Forge or Gettysburg, I mean, it's just mm-hmm. independence hall. And I said, I want to open up session with prayer. And so I asked and called the speaker because they have to put you on for a special day, you know, to to pray to open the house. And that's how that kind of all unfolded. I picked a day in March 2019. It was just a few months after I had been sworn in. 
And uh, I was super nervous. I mean, I was yeah. just like, I, I, I might just run off the stage. Is what, not the stage, but there's a speaker's rostrum <laughs> that you sit up on and you speak. And you can see the Bible verse at the back of the, the house, wow. you know, when you're standing there. And I just got up and prayed from my heart. Um, you know, and it and, was super powerful. Like, I watched that prayer and you could feel it. You could feel the power of it. So it just happened to be on the same day that the first Muslim... A uh, representative was being sworn in, and I had no idea. Like I didn't. It wasn't intentional. No, absolutely at all. not. Oh, but as I'm wow. praying, I start hearing. You know, I started to pray for Jerusalem, um, the peace oh, wow. of Jerusalem and Israel. I I thanked that. Don- I thank the Lord that Donald Trump stand stood alongside Israel mm-hmm. unequivocally. I think I said, um, and I started hearing. I object. I object. And I'm like, okay, well, just keep praying. <laughs> and so I just kept praying, yeah. and. Uh, speaking Jesus's name, I think I was so scared. I was calling upon him to help me. (laughs) And uh, I walked off the uh, stage or the, you know, the speaker's rostrum. I walked off and uh, the AP, which is Associated Press, was right outside the the house. And they said, do you apologize for praying? I guess somebody had alerted them to this, you know, woman praying and and, and she's praying such a bold prayer. Right. So I walked <laughs> off the, the state house floor and they said, do you apologize for, pray- for praying? I go, I never apologize for praying. Like, nice. I don't know. I was oh, like, that's so good. and that kind of became the, the, the tagline I've said in other, you know, interviews. And yeah. I, I never, I never backed down. And I said, no, why would I ever apologize? And it's yeah. so funny. All these newscasters came and, well, you said every knee shall bow and every tongue. And I go, yeah, that's in the Bible. And they're yeah. like, well, that was very offensive. I go, it's the scriptures. Yeah. <laughs> like, and they, wow. they don't know that. Not that mm-hmm. I know like everything I'm saying in the Bible, but like, um, they don't have any idea of God's word. And so mm-hmm. they just consistently were like, well, you also said this. I go, that is also in the Bible. Like wow. they just, they have yeah. no concept of it. Wow. Um, Would so you say- it was, yeah, it was, it was a crazy time. We did get, you know, threats and, uh, all kinds of emails. I have a lot saved thousands of emails, wow. thousands. I have about three boxes of cards saved for my kids so that history and my children can see that <laughs> wow. the good and the bad, yes. you know, yes. take the bad. You're going to get the hits. I even had pastors mm-hmm. writing me saying that was not of God. And, you know, wow. saying that you shouldn't have prayed that way. They don't know my heart. Like yeah. I was literally praying from my heart. Jesus picked, uh, David because of his heart. That's you so know? good. And so they don't know my heart in that yeah. and who I was as a person. And so I had no qualms about it. Look, I wasn't worried about that at all. It didn't That's bother so me at yeah. all because I know who I am in Jesus. I know that my heart was right when I was praying um, and just yeah. came straight from my heart. And so yeah. it just didn't bother me. Those things just roll off my back. I don't know why I think that's how God made me. Um, it <laughs> might be it. the fighting little spirit that he made yeah. in me. You know, that second child, just like that spitfire. <laughs> I don't know, but it just doesn't bother me. Yeah. And I let God defend me. I let Jesus defend me. I didn't feel like I had to go out there. And, oh, I mean, you know, I just mm-hmm. let him defend me. You don't and have to explain yourself. No, then it, it, is, God's yeah. word explains itself. That's so good. It's a fire. And it's amazing to see when you speak Jesus's name, how yes. powerful it is. We yes. sing the songs every Sunday, yes. but like we, you have to get outside of the church to actually see how powerful mm-hmm. when you speak Jesus's name in an area that's completely dark, it li- it brings light. It brings light. Yeah. It's, but you got to get outside the walls of the church to do that church. That's we won't so get back good. to that again, but but you no, got in order good. to be the light in the darkness, you have to get outside those walls yeah. and do that where God's called you to be. And that's what it was like. And it's literally for me, it's just amazing because it's like, wow. Not that I obviously know he is who he says he is. Yeah. But he is who he says he, he is. He is who he says he is. And it, yeah. his name is that powerful. Yeah. It's amazing. Yes. It so obviously good. you can tell it gets me fired up. <laughs> Which I love. <laughs> like you're so passionate about that. But well, then I love you're Jesus. passionate about Yes, but then you're also passionate about what he's called you to. Yeah. And I love, you know, you don't apologize about like being in politics. That prayer, for example, you know, I love it. God, country, and family. I love it. Yes. Yeah. And if you can't defend your family, everyone always says, oh, wait, God, family, country. But I just took that class, biblical citizenship through the Patriot Academy. You can't defend your family if you don't have a free country. So that's that's why it's God, country, family. Yeah. Because you can't defend your family. If you don't have Second Amendment right, you don't have the right of (laughs) self-defense. I know you're going to go into that (laughs) I'm already ahead of you. I love it. No, tell me, why is the Second Amendment so important? Oh, gosh. I mean, if you don't see, you know, playing out in front of our eyes in Israel, why the Second Amendment is so important, uh, I don't know what world you're living in. But the Second Amendment defends... (laughs) 
not the, so good. The Second Amendment defends all the rest. If you yeah. can't defend yourself, um, liberty's lost. Yeah. You know, I think it was Cy Robertson on uh, Duck Dynasty. And they do a podcast. I love them. But he goes, God and guns got us here and God and guns will keep us here. <laughs> and That's uh, awesome. I'm like, yeah. that's, it's so yeah. true. But on, on the serious, I mean, that is serious. But on another note, like you hear Holocaust survivors that say, keep your guns Keep your and make sure you have ammo. I'll never forget. Wow. Um, I'll never forget hearing a Holocaust survivor on YouTube say, "We we should have never given up our guns." She wow. goes, "We would have gone down shooting when they came for us." And she said, "But we didn't have a way to defend ourselves." Yeah. And she said, "Keep your guns, but make sure you have ammo." She's so sweet. Like, oh. And she goes, "Because the guns aren't any good if you don't have if ammo." You don't have ammo. And so yeah. it is. Um, it's critical. I mean, I think that's why we do not have more massive attacks on our mainland because of how armed that the founding fathers, it's amazing what they've created. I mean, you probably know this, but like the first week of buck season or rifle season is the third, the world's third largest army. Can you believe that? Don't make me, I I mean, just pumps me up. (laughs) I know. It pumps me up too, because I'm like, we still have that, you know, and I, how, how many people are going out for rifle season? I don't know. But when I heard that statistic, yeah. that we're the third largest army if you go hunting. It's amazing. It's wild I mean, to what think the founding so, fathers yes. did and built. Yes. The biggest standing army of, a, of, of armed American citizens, law abiding. Yes. Armed American citizens is the greatest thing. Uh, I mean, it's just... It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. And I stood on the state house floor and I warned because they were trying to run all these gun control bills. Horrible. And, um, you know, I warned them. I said, do you know what's killed more people in the last hundred years than anything else? You want to know what that is? Governments. Oh, wow. Holocaust. Over yeah. six million. I think there's more than that. Stalin. How many? Mao mm. Zedong. Do you know how many people they've killed? Wow. Millions and wow. millions and millions of people. Mm-hmm. have been killed because of governments, tyrannical governments. And the only way to fight that, obviously, God and guns. God and guns. I love that. Never, ever give up and never surrender the Second Amendment. Yeah. Is that's that critical? So good. <laughs> that's so good. You get so fired up about it and I love it. <laughs> I guess, what do you say? I'm just curious, playing yeah. devil's advocate here. here but um, if I were someone who doesn't like guns and I say, oh, it causes school shootings, what do you say to that? Uh, I'd say get out and train. Like you need to go and actually teach yourself okay. how to how to shoot, what it's like. Um, I had a good friend of ours, an army ranger that took me out and trained me for I think like 12 hours. My husband said, hey, wow. can you take my wife? And Jay came with us and he taught me everything. Your husband was and, like, I got to train this girl. <laughs> right. And and listen, I, I I'm it. still not great by any stretch yeah. of the imagination, but he taught me the basics. So and good. so, um, you know, it's critical for, it's your responsibility and it's our responsibility to teach our children. Like my mm-hmm. husband has done such a good job at teaching our boys oh, wow. to respect the gun. Like, okay, this is how it works. This is, yeah. you know, hunting um, and self-defense and what all those things mean. Yeah. That it's... I forgot who it was. Um, I think his last name's Fisher was the founding father. That was a huge advocate for the second amendment. He's like, it's the duty of parents to teach their children how to shoot, how Mm -hmm. to respect the gun and what that means. And so we need more of that. I mean, they used to have, uh, days in school, you know, I mean, people would take their guns in the back of their trucks. It's not the guns. (laughs) It's our morals. It's our values that we've lost in the society. Speak that. Yes. Yes, Speak it. And that's what I told. They have all these gun control groups that come down to the Capitol constantly. And I said, you come back down. I go, first of all, I go, don't step foot in my office. I told them. I go, don't even come in. You can go down to some rhino's office, which is a Republican in name only, but you're not getting anywhere in my office with that. Yeah. And I said, don't even come over. And I go, if you want to come back down here and advocate for something, advocate for the Bible to be brought back in schools. Yeah. And I go, because that is when crime rates went up. That's when um, That's so good. Uh, pregnancy before marriage went up and they, because they took God's word out of schools and obviously not forced, but as, as an elective to know what the truth is in God's word. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's what our nation was founded upon, Judeo-Christian so values. And the further away we walk from that, you see it, crime rate in cities. Mm-hmm. That's what happens when it's a godless society. Yeah. It's not. It doesn't take rocket science to figure it out. Blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord. That's what the Bible tells us. That's it's, good. It's not a hard way back. The pilgrims told us the way back. Yeah, yeah. 
That's so good. Yeah. Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I, I just want to get out and shoot now. I don't like shooting. Oh, wow. And you ride horses <laughs> I, and everything. You're I like know. amazing. I ride, I ride horses and I go hunting, but I always miss a deer because I get buck fever. <laughs> So, so you need to come but out shooting with I us. know. Tell yeah. me. Let yeah. me know next time you go. I'll come right. with you. Yeah. For real. Okay. Seriously. Well, but a gun, like the whole, I can do it with, if I have earmuffs. Yes. But if I don't have that protection, I hate doing it. And I want to learn how to do it without that. Okay. So the deal is, I mean, my husband can help you more than me, but he was trained <laughs> even further through this. Oh, really? Range. Yeah. Like significant training. That's awesome. Um, but the deal is you take me horseback riding. <gasps> Oh my gosh, we have a deal. Should we shake on it? (laughs) Sure. This is like official. (laughs) I I I want a horse so bad and I always see you riding horses. So I'll take you. You take me horseback riding, we'll take you shooting. Okay. I'm excited. And you got to shoot the AR, the AR-15. I will. Okay. Okay. I absolutely will. (laughs) Um, Switching subjects, but staying in politics. Sure. Um, What do you think? So what... (laughs) What does a war in, how does a war in Israel affect the future of America? Uh, it affects everything. So, you know, that she's our number one ally. Israel's our number wow. one ally. And so we have to stand by her, obviously, biblically, and then just as a nation in general, um, but most importantly, biblically. Um, mm-hmm. This is Israel's land. We just did a press conference on this with Doug Mastriano. I did last oh, week, good. I think, and Jay came too, Pastor Jay. And, um, you know, we're, e- we're either going to be blessed as a nation because we bless Israel or we'll be cursed as a nation because mm-hmm. we curse Israel. Mm-hmm. And so it is critical. Um, I'm very excited. It looks like the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, just came in today. Um, mm-hmm. And he is. He said the first act that we're going to do as the People's House, the United States House of Representatives, is to support Israel. That is, oh, wow. it could be why God has him there the single reason God placed Mike mm-hmm. Johnson in that position to stand up and support Israel um, as America, because our mm-hmm. we're, we're going to either be blessed or cursed or how we stand with Israel. And so it's, I, I mean, so I can't good. say enough. I mean, we could be, this could lead us into world, world war three. We do not know. Um, but mm-hmm. siding with Israel, that's, that is the only option for America. And so I, I feel like a lot of the leaders right now are just, uh, standing with them in word not in heart and yeah. deed i guess um, do you because yeah. i i know that it a lot of people are saying like president biden initially kind of funded or like behind the scenes funded right that attack right and left and now, all of our things uh, in ammo <laughs> a helicopter everything that they left behind who yeah. knows if some of that was used we don't know but who knows if some of that was put into the hands of hamas and so it's I just feel like it's a face value. Like they're just saying they support Israel, but it's not indeed like in Mm -hmm. in behind the scenes. Maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I'm grateful that he's saying he supports Israel, but let's see what his deeds say. You know, let's, let's see what he, the actions are. Yeah. Um, Because you cannot believe these people that are on the left, sadly, um, they say a lot of things. It has nothing to do with their actions. Yeah. Nothing. They'll say whatever they have to to get their agenda across, sadly. <laughs> I mean, student so. debt eliminated. Oh, geez. You know? <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyways. Yeah, personal responsibility <laughs> here, guys. If you take out a loan, you pay it back. Okay. Yes. That's all I'm saying about that one. <laughs> Anyways. But no, like, it's just an example of if you say something and then you're like, <laughs> then then you're in office and you're not doing it. You're not following through with it. You know? So, yeah. That's the big but, thing about politicians is they speak, yeah. out, speak out both do sides you, of their mouth. Can I ask you, do you think yeah. Trump's going to win in 2024? Um, I, I I think he'll definitely win the primary. Okay. Um, I, you know, I'm praying for our, you know, our elections. It's, yeah. That's important. In some of the battleground states, it's, it's very... Uh, we had an unconstitutional election in 2020 as far as the Secretary of State added three days to the election, added drop boxes, um, and al- allowed curing of ballots and changing mm-hmm. of signatures. And, and it's just a lot went on. So we need to be praying. We yeah, need to that's be praying. Good. I mean, this is a man that has now at this point with what, 90 plus indictments, they just <laughs> basically willing to go to bat for all of us for freedom. It's, and he, and he could be golfing right now. Yeah. I mean, and I'm not saying he's obviously perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. None of us are. But I haven't seen someone be willing to take this much 
mm-hmm. on his shoulders for freedom. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll, no, I know my lifetime, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's overwhelming. So one day mm-hmm. at a time, let's one day at a time, we keep fighting. Um, but yes, that's going to be a huge fight that we've got to win in 24. So yeah, one day at a time now, right? Don't worry about tomorrow for God will take care of it. No, that's you know? so true. I, it's, it's overwhelming if you take it and try to look out so, you know, so far. Not that that's so far away, but. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think the other thing too is, and this is something I've learned, that as a Christian, as a believer, we have the same, we're under, like we're Abraham's heir. And yeah. God has promised to protect us, to bless us, to make us succeed right. in our endeavors, in what he's called us to, no yeah. matter what, no yeah. matter who's in office. So I think that's something that I've been like, no matter what, I'm going to succeed in whatever the Lord's called me to because he's called me yeah. and he's the one that blesses. That's but right. obviously the who election thing is still important. Yeah. Commit your plans to the Lord and they shall because, succeed. The Bible yeah, says. Exactly. But yeah. It's neat that you, it's, it's neat that you bring Trump up when you say, Hey, he didn't speak out both sides of his mouth. He actually did what he said. He d- <laughs> and, and I know no he did. other politician has, whether ever, you like him or not, he did. He does what he yeah. says he's going to do. And yeah. he stands by America and nobody else has mm-hmm. ever done that. They speak out both sides of their mouth Yeah, and we're tired so of true. it. Like, it's so funny. My boys like won't even watch the debates anymore <laughs> because they're like, it's boring without Donald Trump. Yeah. I mean, Cause he just makes it like so much he fun. Does. And he does. in the way he, he handles things sometimes it's just, it's, it's fun for them. And they're like, well, yeah, now it looks like a Saturday night live skit, like a typical, <laughs> typical politicians yeah. and not that like, you know. Um, I'm not saying all, all of them are bad, but it just, he brought a different, um, he just, he didn't need to do it and he did it. You yeah. got to respect that. I love, it, it's amazing. I love how you pointed so. that out. Yeah. Like he's fighting for the man. He's, not, a, he's a billionaire. He could be playing He doesn't golf. need to be he, in it. And he chose to do this and he yeah. wasn't paid when he was president. And it was some of the best four years yes. since, yes. you know, r- definitely Ronald Reagan and then possibly since Lincoln. Mm-hmm. I mean- Nobody can argue that. Like you ask all these crazies that go against him, you know, it's like, well, how were your four years during 2016, yeah. 20, you know, when he was in? Yeah. No, that's. We were headed back to uh, yeah. making America great again. Yeah. That's so, so good. Yeah. My final question is, um, what is your encouragement to the church and how can we be praying for you and also for the politics of America? So you said what the church, what is your encouragement to the church and how can we be praying for you and also America? Yeah. Um, it's more of like a warning for the church. Okay. Like, yeah, uh, no, I'm, go ahead. I mean, I, I want to have encouragement, but I'm, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a warning. You know, it's, I, I think there's a verse in revelation that says, wake up and strengthen what remains b- before it dies. That's so good. And, and, and if you can look in 10 years from now, and if we could see the trajectory that we're on in this nation, and if we don't turn back to God, second Chronicles seven fourteen, if we don't turn we the can't. ship around through the church, yeah. those buildings will be gone. Um, mm-hmm. All that the church looks to now, you know, all of these self-help books that all of these pastors, and I'm not saying that that's, you know, horrible, but like get back to the power of the Holy Spirit. Get back to the basics. Nine percent, Sarah. Now I'm really getting fired up. Nine <laughs> percent. Only nine percent of Christians in America read their Bible on a daily basis. Wow. I'm not talking about being legalistic. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about spending time in the only thing that's alive and living and sharper yes. than a two-edged sword. And especially in a time like this, thank where you. Where we need it the most. And yet, so. and yet so many pastors in this American church that we've created just choose one little verse and then make it all about ourselves. It's not about ourselves. The Bible says to lay your life down. And I don't fully comprehend that because we've lived in an amazing country where we haven't, yeah. we haven't faced true persecution. Yeah. Okay. So you say, oh, well, you handle the bad name. So what? I'm not facing true persecution. I'm not being mm-hmm. fed to the lion's den, are we? I'm not being shot by Hamas, like what's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, We haven't faced that yet. So the church better wake up. Like it it is, it is a dire warning at the church time that the silence is deafening Mm. from those that are in the arena, from me that stands in the arena and it's a small one, whatever God realm God's put me in, I'm grateful for, but standing in that arena and seeing the amount of evil and then going into church, not ours, I'm saying in general, the American church, and then not even speaking up for the unborn, not speaking up for Mm -hmm. children that are being castrated, 
by mm-hmm. evil. That's calling it good. And then that's saying so that's good. not our duty. Yeah. Shame on them. Mm-hmm. Shame on them. And it, it comes out of love. I've grown up in the church. I've been in the church my whole life. I mean, since I was born, <laughs> you know, I've been in the church. I love God's church. Uh, but the bride of Christ has got to get back to the basics again. Read God's word, pray, repent, fast, and and, and get back to the basics again. And start involving yourself in the world affairs and town affairs and civil government and what's going mm-hmm. on. It matters uh, just like it did in the first great awakening, the second great awakening. That That's turned so our nation. Yeah. George uh, Whitfield single-handedly, and then um, all the others in the second great awakening Mm -hmm. um, that God used to change our nation and turn our nation back to him. That's the only way back. So that's my encouragement. It's an encouragement, but equally a warning to them. Uh, Wake up. You better strengthen what remains before it dies. Your buildings will crumble. All of that's going to be gone. All these pastors that think that they can sit and just continue to write self-help book after self-help book. I mean, you heard Jay, there's a church that couldn't even answer the questions of biblical stances on Mm -hmm. marriage, the unborn, Mm -hmm. and shutting their church down during COVID. The church better wake up. Yeah, that's so good. Wow, so good. Well, thank you, Stephanie. No, don't be sorry. I get a little Guys, you heard it. (laughs) Anyways, no, thank you so much for that. And thank you for being on here. Yeah, absolutely. I'll come back anytime. I love podcasts. Oh my gosh. So much fun. Say, so horse, horse horseback riding. riding And you shoot. Yes, yes. We got a deal. So. If you want to learn how to shoot, you guys know where to. No, I am not that good. Oh, sorry. Your husband? Is that the one? My husband's good, yes, but I mean, he was trained by somebody who was <laughs> okay. the best. So Then don't ask her how to teach you, but ask her about But I do know the, the basics. Politics. Like, I do know enough that, you know, they trained yeah. me enough to where I could get to defend myself. That's so, so good. Yeah. Because I, I have, like, I have a um, handgun, but I'm not good at shooting it. I have it for real estate. Yeah. Because I need it. But I, maybe I shouldn't say that on here, but I'm not that good at shooting it, so I need to get come get lessons. It just It's just training. It is training, exactly and I need to practice. And that's, It's just training. Yeah. And again, I don't have a lot of time, but I don't do that as much as I should. Yeah. It is so much fun. Yeah. It's so much fun. So yeah, yeah that's the deal. Oh, yeah. Okay. We got a deal. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, guys, I hope that you really, really enjoyed listening to Stephanie, because I did, and be encouraged to get out there and vote. Get off, get your butts off your couch, and go to a voting booth to help swing this nation back to where it's supposed to be. So, Amen. Thank you again, Thanks, Stephanie. Guys. You're awesome. Thanks. Goodbye, everybody.